48. I2 is produced by the reaction of 0.4235 moles of copper 2 chloride, which is CuCl2, according to the following equation. And we have 2 CuCl2 plus 4 Ki yields 2 CuI plus 4 KCl plus I2. And then we have letter A. How many molecules, so how many molecules of I2 are produced? Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to rewrite this a little bigger just so that we can work with it. So I have 2 CuCl2 plus 4 Ki yields 2 CuI plus, geez, plus 4 KCl, oh gosh, KCl and then plus I2. Okay, now the first thing that I notice is that there's already coefficients in the front of some of the compounds. So there's like a two in front of here. There's four Ki's, there's two CuI's, there's four, and then there's no coefficient here, but that secretly means that there's a one, right? So I already know that this is balanced. Thank goodness. So now to keep everything together, I like to write down the information that I know and what I'm trying to solve for. So they told me that I have 0.4235 moles of CuCl2. So I'm going to go to CuCl2, and just underneath, I'm just going to say, okay, I got 0.4235 moles. Cool. Now, for letter A, they're just asking for the molecules of I2. So I'm going to scan my balanced equation. I'm going to find the I2, and I'm just going to say, okay, they wanted the molecules. You got it. So molecules equals question mark. Okay. Now, when you notice that you have a balanced equation and when you have information on one compound, so I have this amount of moles of CuCl2, and they're asking me for a quantity of um, another compound, in this case it's a molecule, we have to do stoichiometry. That basically just means that we have to convert from this information to this information using a balanced equation. Now, the general flow of stoichiometry problems is this right here. So I just like to, you know, just run it over in my head. I say grams to moles to moles to grams, grams to moles to moles to grams. That's like the general flow of a stoichiometry problem. Chances are you're going to start with grams and you're going to end with grams. However, you can, um, you can change this flow diagram to whatever you need. Now the first thing is, is that this is kind of, let's see, can I move this? Oh boy, what happened? Hold on guys, I'm gonna try one more time and I might have clipped it, ah, perfect, okay. It just, it just wasn't center. So my brain was like, can we please center it? Okay, anyway. Now, you can start anywhere on this, on this little diagram, um, and you can add on if you need to. So for example, where are we starting here? Oh, they already gave us moles of CuCl2. Now, just look at the color coding here. The red is for the information that they gave you, and you notice how I put this in red? The Blue is what you want. And you notice how I put this in blue? So they already gave us the moles of CuCl2. So I'm over here. A just represents that compound. So I don't even need grams. So bye-bye. I'm going to start at the moles. So I have 0 0.4235 moles of now specifically... And maybe I'll just pull this out a little bit. Specifically CuCl2. Now they ask for molecules, right? So that's not it. That's not it. So I got to add an avenue here, right? I know that it's got to be in this section because it's the ending component, right? But can I make a relationship between molecules and maybe moles or grams? Yeah. Yeah. Right? We learned this, you know, a couple of chapters back. Remember, one mole of anything, and in this case, it's I'll take it from I2, right? One mole of I2 equals, 
Avogadro's number, right? 6.0, I believe it's 6.062 times 10 to the 23rd. I think it might actually be 0.6, yeah, this is basically good, Zero, uh, 6.0622 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of I2. The unit or the molecule has to be the same. But the molecules are stemming from mole. Oh, so maybe I can just take a little detour. Once I find this out, I can find the molecules of I2. And then instead of finding it, you know, for B specifically, we're finding it for I2. Now, if I just look a little bit ahead, they're asking also for what is the mass of I2. Remember, the mass is grams. So this we have the avenue for. So now, oh, not B, not B, Christina, I2. So now we have our basic flow, right? To get to the answer, oh, let me just do that again. That's good enough. So to get to answer A, we have to go this way and then down. And in, in order to get to answer B, I'm just going to go straight across, okay? So let's do A. Now we got to start with what we're given. we got to start all the way over here, right? So 0 0.4235, and now I'll color code this moles of CuCl2, and maybe I will just bring this a little down. Yeah, okay. So this is a conversion factor, right? Which means that I'm just going to times by a ratio. Now, the easiest thing that I've noticed is always work with your units first and then go back to fill in your numbers. So for example, you don't want moles of CuCl2, so that's gonna go on the bottom to cancel out. Look to see who's next. The next arrow is going to moles of I2. So that's what I'm going to put at the top. Units are there, but now I just need to figure out what are the numbers. Well, this is something new for stoichiometry. Whenever you have a mole to mole ratio and it's of different compounds, right? I2 is on the top, CuCl2 is on the bottom, and they're different colors, right? Red and blue. The only relationship that they have is through the balanced equation. So in this case, I have to use the balanced equation to put in these numbers. Now specifically, we just look at the coefficients, aka the big numbers, in front of the two compounds that I care about. You don't have to be looking at the whole thing. Zone in on the two that you're looking for. So in this case, I'm going to zone in on I2 and CuCl2. So for CuCl2, I see that there's a 2 coefficient in the front. So I'm going to put a 2 down here. 2 goes with the CuCl2. And for the I2, I see that I don't have a number. Remember, it's just a 1, right? So I'm going to put a, a 1 in front of here. Now everything is accounted for, so now I can cancel out the units that cancel. The number does not cancel, just the unit. Now, I don't want this answer, right? I want the molecules of I2. So I'm not going to just, you know, equal this out. That's going to waste time on tests and quizzes. We want to be the most efficient. So don't be scared to just keep flowing with it. I believe in you. You got this. So we're just going to do the same thing as we did before. We're going to multiply by a ratio, and we're going to now work on this one. So I don't want this unit. So that goes on the bottom and look to see the next unit. I'm trying to go to molecules. So molecules of I2 go on the top. Okay, units are accounted for. Now we just gotta figure out what the numbers are. But this is the mole to molecule uh, conversion of the same molecule. That's this one. Right? One mole of I2 is Avogadro's number, 6.0622. So one mole of I2 equals 6.02. And 
Oh boy, this one, this one's gonna be a big one. So hold on, let me just, I think I can fit it in there. Times 10 to the 23rd. There we go. And now the numbers and the units are accounted for, so I can cancel out the units that cancel out. And now since I found out the answer, the unit mo molecules of I2 is the unit that I want, so I just calculate. Anything in the denominator, you divide, so DD. Anything in the numerator, you multiply. So I'm just gonna take it from left to right. I'm gonna say 0 0.4235, 0.4235 divided by two, because it's in the denominator, and then times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Now, since we started with four sig figs, we have to end with four sig figs. The conversion numbers have no weight for significant figures. So if your professor or teacher cared about sig figs, I don't care. Uh, <laughs> but if you started with four, you should end with four. So my answer is 1.275 times 10 to the 23rd. And that's molecules of I2. So that is the first answer. So basically meaning, if you started off with 0 0.4235 moles, you will produce a lot of molecules, 1.275 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Okay. So now since I did all this, I'm just going to raise this up a little bit. And let's do letter B. Now, you could have, you know, taken it from here, but I'm just going to start from the get-go again, just to kind of show you guys. We'll just, you know, uh, just run through this, right? Just because I don't have the mass number. But I need to find the grams of I2. So the first conversion is exactly the same, because I still have to go to moles of I2. So... I'm still going to multiply by the ratio. This was the same conversion. Mole of CuCl2 on the bottom. And then we have mole of I2 on the top. And the numbers were 1 and 2. This canceled. And now you're left with mole of I2, which is right here. But now instead of going down, I'm just going to go across. Still a conversion. So times by a ratio. Oh my goodness. <laughs> times by a ratio, work with the units first. I don't want mole of I2, so that goes on the bottom. And now I want grams of I2. So G of I2 goes on the top. Now, this is a gram to mole uh, ratio with the same molecule. We've done this before, right? A couple of chapters ago. If you're have moles of one thing and you want to find the grams of the same thing, that's the periodic table. We're going to use periodic table, PT, to find out the conversion. And remember, when you are using the periodic table, you always have one mole of that. The mass number of your molecule, in this case I2, goes on the top. So in this case, I have two iodines. Each iodine is 126.9, so I'm just going to times it by two. So I get two... 53.8, and then the units cancel, and that's going to be my answer. So I'm going to do 0.4235 divided by 2, because that's in the denominator, and times by 253.8. Keeping with the four sig figs, I get 53.74, and that is now grams of I2. Cool. Now, just know that the first answer, the molecule one, and the second one is the same quantity. It's just a different unit. Both of them say that if you started off with 0.4235 moles, you would either produce this amount in molecules or you'll produce 53.74 grams of I2. And that's it. So guys, hopefully you're getting more comfortable with this stoichiometry idea. We've done tons of problems. 
are ready. So if you guys want more practice, you could go back in the playlist. If you guys are on the playlist, which I highly recommend you are. Um, thank you so much for viewing the, the video. I hope I'm giving you quality content and, you know, to, to learn chemistry. It's not, not that hard. You know, just a lot of steps sometimes. Okay? I believe in you guys. You guys are going to do great on your tests and quizzes. Let me know how you're doing. Love to talk to you guys. I'll see you. Well, not see you, but I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you in the next video. All right? See you later. Bye.